Hey guys, I'm Lauren. Hi, I'm Tyler. Hello, I'm Sander. And I'm Ruben. We're going to show you what's involved in nuclear medicine, take you through a day in the life of a nuclear medicine technologist, and show you what makes it all possible. Let's start at the beginning. Radioisotopes or radiopharmaceuticals are radioactive materials injected into the body to image internal organs. In nuclear medicine, when we mention isotopes, we are referring to the radioactive elements used in the lab. These isotopes are attached to tracers, which allow them to be taken up into certain organs in the body. This is a cyclotron. Cyclotrons are one form of radioisotope generator that provides several radiopharmaceuticals to hospitals around the world. It looks complicated. Cyclotrons are basically particle accelerators that activate stable elements by accelerating charged high-energy particles into them. There's a cyclotron beneath the VG making many isotopes for our use. Cool. Nuclide generator. Nuclide generators are systems for holding parent isotopes, which have long half-lives and can be transported and stored without losing activity. They decay into daughter isotopes with low half-lives that can be easily separated for clinical use. Wet lab. People on the radio pharmacy rotation start the day by preparing the radionuclides in the wet lab. Every room that contains radioactive material has this symbol posted on the door. It warns patients and hospital workers of the potential radiation inside. Hey, don't forget to wear your ring and TLD badges to keep track of how much radiation we're receiving. Now we're in the nuke med department where all the magic happens. Here we can do bone, thyroid, lungs, heart, kidney, liver and spleen, infection and inflammation, gastrointestinal, brain and lymph node scans. Iodine is used for therapeutic purposes. If someone has thyroid cancer or hypothyroidism, we can give them treatments of liquid iodine to kill the thyroid. Iodine is taken orally, but you can also inhale an aerosolized isotope to image the lungs. Injection is the most common method and is used for most scans. In nuclear medicine, the gamma camera is most often used in imaging. Depending on the type of scan, a one- or two-headed camera can be used. For a whole body scan, we would most likely have the patient lie down and save time by using two camera heads. Sander has generously volunteered to take one for the team and have his brain scanned for us. Tyler, would you mind? Okay, Sander, take a seat. You'll feel just a little sting. What? Wait! Ah! Mm. Pretty. Perfect. Now just lie still. You won't feel a thing. I promise. The gamma camera works by detecting gamma radiation emitted by the patient after isotope injection. The radiation is detected by a sodium iodide crystal, which converts the radiation to visible light. This light interacts with the photocathode, which ejects an electron into the photomultiplier tube. The photomultiplier tube amplifies the electrical signal so the pulse can be picked up by the anode and sent to the computer. All nuclear medicine equipment must be checked daily and calibrated to ensure it is in working order. So, what's my diagnosis? Sorry, we're not allowed to tell you that. We send the picture to your physician, who will interpret the scan. Ah, uh, so will I have any side effects? Nope. With the doses of radiation we're giving you, you will be completely normal after it leaves your system. We'll get you to drink lots of water to flush it out of your system, and you'll be free to go. Awesome. Thanks for everything, guys. I'm going to tell everyone that all those horror stories I hear about nuclear medicine are just myths.